God wants you to experience His victory. Do you believe God can give you victory? Okay, so a uh, confession time. I messed up. <laughs> I did. I did. So I went to um, post the video from last week. Okay. Um, and I thought everything was good. So I got up on Wednesday morning and pulled up the podcast to episode three. And episode two started playing. I reposted episode two. <laughs> oh, wow. Let's see. Well, you know what? Maybe yeah. somebody needs somebody to, needs to hear. To hear, to hear it. Y'all are too it. kind. Y'all yeah. are too kind. So but it gets better. So I came back to fix it. And I got to the desk and I was, I guess I was all kind of anxious about it. So I actually went back and instead of posting three, I scrolled over and posted the intro again. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know what people are listening oh, to. Oh, we got to check that so out. So then I finally went back and fixed it. And you, you heard I, it. I did hear it because mm. I was trying to listen to it because it was my first episode to be on. Yeah. So I wanted to listen to it and I was like, I don't remember being a part of this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this is episode four mm -hmm. of Finding Victory. We are mm -hmm. telling the stories mm -hmm. of what God is doing in mm -hmm. our church family, in our community, with our partners, in our ministries. And, mm -hmm. and uh, Gus, man, we're so excited that you're here. Oh, it's a blessing. It's great. Yeah. Good it's, to cool. be, it's good to be here. Our, you know, people say you're the local pastor. I like loco pastor a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> like loco, like loco. Yeah, I see, I see. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, if you... Uh, if you know my wife and kids, they'll say, yeah, I'm kind of <laughs> I'm a, little, a little crazy at times. So before we get to talking about what you're going to talk about, mm -hmm. we're going to all talk about um, mm -hmm. point three. Uh, if you didn't hear or watch episode one, I'd encourage you to do that. It talks about what this is all about. Mm -hmm. Episode two and three sort of set up where we are right now, talking about Tony's vision message. And today we're just going to wrap that up quickly, uh, talking about point three, which has to do with life, mm. right? Living, well, to, to, to say it exactly, the Spirit's power in you. So when, oh, the Spirit power, when the Spirit of God comes to live in us, he brings, Tony said, his presence, his power, and his purity. Mm. I love that. Amen. Mm -hmm. Inside Amen. of us. Amen. That I feel like we often like lose track mm -hmm. of in our daily life. Mm -hmm. And even for those that have been in church and in relationship with Christ for a very long time, you know, sometimes we forget that. Mm -hmm. That power lives inside of us. Yeah. Yes, I mean, wow. just Romans mm -hmm. 8, 11, and 12 says that same power yes. that raised Jesus yes. from the dead. That is, can you imagine? I mean, the only person that, that really rose from the dead was Christ. Mm -hmm. So you imagine the power of God to do that, right? Mm -hmm. And it says that we have that power. And, and it's sad to see some of the, the Christians that we come, and, and we have them in our churches and many churches and, and in our families that mm -hmm. are defeated. Mm -hmm. right. And when we shouldn't be defeated. Mm -hmm. We said we got the power, right. that we have victory, and, and sometimes we don't, we don't get that. Mm -hmm. you know? We don't let it basically impact our life. Right. We don't yeah. let the Spirit take over and impact our life. Yes. Yeah, that's what Paul yes. said, right? In yeah. verse, I think it was 12. So then, brothers and sisters, we are not obligated, to your point, what mm -hmm. Paul was saying, we're not obligated to the to the flesh. Yeah, I am stumbling all over my words today. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've heard worse. Hey, you've heard worse, probably worse out of me. Uh, so I'm the Hispanic here, man. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, yeah, so we're not obligated to the flesh to live according to the flesh. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, we can live in victory. Amen. Right. But I think Amen. we forget, mm -hmm. like we've all mm -hmm. said, that we do have that power inside of us. And it's easy mm -hmm. to live. I would say it's easier to live in that defeat mm -hmm. than it is sure. to live knowing that I have that power. Like we have to be so intentional about sure. the Holy Spirit is inside of me. And mm -hmm. I do have victory and I do have that power to overcome whatever I'm going through. Yeah, for sure. We in the flesh cannot battle Satan. We, right. we should right. know that by now, right? Mm -hmm. if, if it's not that God's giving us the power, mm -hmm. that we're in tune with God, we're going to be defeated. Right. Because, I mean, he is. Exactly. Know, the devil is yes. it's a powerful, yes. you know, enemy. He is. Because yes. so, you started to say a minute ago, uh, well, you yeah. did say a minute ago, yeah. and I'd love for you to just to, to say that again for everybody to hear about only living half the gospel. Mm. You know, For sure. I mean, and, and, and Tony said that, you know, we, we know the gospel that Christ, you know, paid, you know, for mm -hmm. our sins in the cross and he went there. But we forget the second part, as he said, which is the victory of 
the resurrected Christ, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that he wasn't not only just buried there, but he rose again the third day. Mm -hmm. And that's the power that Pastor Tony in the Bible talks about, that that's the power that we need. That's and sometimes right. we just stay at one, but we know one, we accept one. Hey, yeah, we want, we want salvation, but then we don't live in the power because right. we don't. Or, or we forget sometimes yes. that, you know. Right, <clears throat> right. We have to activate it. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, sure. it's really, and it's kind of what you were saying too, we mm -hmm. have to activate that power in Christ. We have Amen. to recognize who we are, whose we are, yes. mm -hmm. and claim that, and claim that victory in Jesus over all of it. Mm -hmm. Because even the demons know his name Amen. and know who he is and have to bow down to that. Sure. And so that's what we're going to be learning all year. That's mm -hmm. what this mm -hmm. entire year we're going to be focusing on is just how to do that. Mm -hmm. And so right now in the series, Victory and Chaos in First Corinthians, yeah. uh, yeah. such, such a helpful, helpful sermon series yes. to begin really, uh, or maybe if you're a believer, um, to remind you of that power, of those promises of Christ, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and, and to grow mm -hmm. in that victory. And so, Gus, man, as, as, as we're going out throughout the rest of the year, we're looking for those stories of victory. As people begin to get it, as, as God does things in their lives and in their families, and, and as things happen in our church and our yeah. local partners and world partners, we're looking for those stories yeah. to, to share, to just say, look what the Lord has done. Not to mm -hmm. you know, pat ourselves on the back yeah. or anything like that, but to make much of Jesus. Mm -hmm. and so I'm so glad, we're so glad that you're here yeah. To kind of help us understand maybe a big picture of what God mm -hmm. is doing in our community. Yeah. Well, I mean, we've been so blessed as a church. We know that. I mean, mm -hmm. we, 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 we do so much in our community and we partner with so many people. It's really interesting and, you know, not coincidence, but I just came from a, I mean, I'm in the board of Adult and Teen Challenge. You talk about victory. Mm -hmm. These are people that have struggled with addiction. And then you go there and you see some of the ones that are, they had over 15 baptisms last year. Wow. In a place that people have come either from prison or from drug addiction, all kinds of different addiction, mm -hmm. alcohol. And, and you see, and we partner with people like mm -hmm. that. And we have people that are, that are volunteer. We have people that serve in that ministry. And then you see the power that only God could get someone that in that environment and gives them victory. Yes. And, uh, and it's, it's really great that we partner with people like that. You know, this Thursday I'm in a... Uh, part of a job fair for people that are coming out of prison. Mm -hmm. So again, these are people that, hey, you know, we serve time, but now we want to get a job. We want to mm -hmm. overcome some of these obstacles. There's so many great stories out there within our church, but even within within our, our community. And that's the power of that resurrection that you see in that message, right. that we see it all over our community. And that's by people serving, people getting engaged, and, you know, using God's mm -hmm. power to bless other people. To yeah. encourage other people. Mm -hmm. And that's what I love what I do at our church and represent the church. Just to even engage mm -hmm. our folks in many ways of, of, of serving. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really neat to see that. So as a church, we have partners all over oh, the greater Chattanooga yeah. area uh, that do a lot of different things. What are some of those partners and, and, and uh, some of those activities and things? And Nicole just mentioned that, you know, um, your daughter is playing mm -hmm. volleyball at Bethel mm -hmm. Bible. Well, Bethel Bible, again, here's, here's a ministry that that gets these young kids mm -hmm. and try to give them victory, but it's mm -hmm. a Christian mm -hmm. faith-based organization. Right. It's not just like, here's another after-school program. No, this is a Christian-based mm -hmm. so, uh, you know, ministry. So they help these kids. go. To, they have a school there now. They, you know, so ministries like that, Tennessee Baptist Children's Home. So there's a lot of stuff with kids. Get them early, but then... Mm -hmm. The ones that are like adult and teen challenge, these guys are old, they're in their 30s and 40s, and, they've, and, and they also have the opportunity because God is not a respecter of person of age or anything. So that's the beauty of, of God's power that we, you know, goodness, Mike, there's dozens of our ministries that uh, from sex trafficking, you know, with love's arm and people that, you know, you see, again, women changing their life from prostitution. Mm -hmm. I'm going to imagine that, you know, mm -hmm. just so many things. You know, widows that, that have lost their, their, their mate, their husbands, or, and that we could be a blessing to them. They could find victory in Christ and that Christ is basically their husband. Mm -hmm. and some of them mentioned, remember our Christian that we did, that, you know, Christ is really their power and their one that sustains these widows. Mm -hmm. So it's just a beautiful thing to, to see our ministry involved in it. You know, one of the cool things that... Uh that I, you know, just, I guess stands out in my mind right now is that God is using just 
normal everyday people mm. oh, sure. yeah. to do that, right? Oh, yeah. Like people that are involved in small groups that get excited, mm-hmm. get passionate about a particular yeah. ministry and they go and they get involved. Um, well, I mean, you know, yeah. you and I have talked about that a number of times, but I know your small group has done stuff. Yeah. Your yeah. husband yeah. Sure. being mm-hmm. very much involved in the leadership of small groups right. sees mm-hmm. that regularly. Our yeah. small group mm-hmm. has gotten involved in things and mm-hmm. everything from, from taking meals down to yeah. homeless shelters to painting uh, widows' homes and yeah. light construction to all kinds of things to just love mm-hmm. on people in the name of Christ. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, man, and, and it's, it's twofold. One is w- sometimes these are Christian ministries, so we're encouraging and working with them. Mm-hmm. But a lot of the times is that we're dealing with unbelievers. So if they see the church and the people from the church, because sometimes let's face it, society can give uh, us a black black eye, they're going to give us a black eye. It's always negative stuff coming out of the the church is this, the hypocrites and all that stuff. But when they see ordinary church members just Mm -hmm. serving, nothing in return, and being a blessing, it opens a lot of people's eyes and curiosity. There's stories of people that have come to our church because many of our folks just invited them, but because they served them mm-hmm. or they blessed them, they mm-hmm. or befriended them, and now they're they've been part of our church. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's that's why I think our church, God is blessing, continues to grow. Because I think, imagine I can't do it on my own. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Michael, well, none of us could do it on our mm-hmm. own. Pastor Tony, just, you know, none mm-hmm. of us could do it on our own. Mm-hmm. But when you got thousands of people that are serving mm-hmm. this community, be impacted. It's planting those seeds, right? It's planting those seeds. And sometimes we see the fruit. Mm -hmm. A lot of the time we don't, right? And then somebody else comes along and waters it, and then somebody else gets to see the actual fruit and see it grow. But we are all called to be his Mm -hmm. hands and feet. So it's not just, you know, one person and and a special anointing. We are all called through the power of Jesus Mm -hmm. Christ to serve. And, you know, it's been something really important for us, for our children to see that at a very Mm -hmm. young age. So we were at the community kitchen with our small group and, and had our, you know, three-year-old there with us and she was helping to serve food. She needs to understand that that's important. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think just that ripple effect that it has, whereas now she asks to do that sort of thing. She wants to do that. And I think we can all agree, too, that it's amazing the blessing that you get. That's not why we do it, but it's just you are so in alignment in that Mm -hmm. moment, the beauty of knowing you are doing the Lord's work. It is just this, it's a joy just from him that's indescribable. Right, and you hear that so often. People will say that, you know, it was more a blessing mm-hmm. to me to serve. Mm-hmm. And so I really think it helps us grow in our faith that when we are serving others and yes. participating in the Lord's work. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I love the the Bible when he speaks about things like mm-hmm. that. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's just order, and, and sometimes there, there's not even names, mm-hmm. even in some of these parables. But, uh, but going back to that, Paul says, you know, hey, somebody's going to plant and someone's going to water, mm-hmm. right? But God is the one that does the blessing and the increase, That's right? right? Mm-hmm. Y'all, this is super cool. I, I, Gus, man, I appreciate so much you yeah. coming and sharing just a little bit because I feel like if we had an hour-long podcast, <laughs> you could just share on and on and on and on and on. No, um, so we'll have to bring you back to share uh, some yes. more of these things. Yes. That would be fantastic. Uh, and maybe a little bit of your story, too. I know it's a pretty interesting one, uh, how God has worked victory into your life uh, to overcome things. But uh, I am and continue to be excited about <laughs> this project and what God is going to show us. So thank yeah, you all for being here. Absolutely. Oh, thank you. You guys do a great job here. It's awesome.